Hello, everyone. I'm very honored to be the livestock of OSDI. Um, okay, so today I'm going to talk about Enso, which is a new streaming interface for NIC application communication. Okay, so if you've been keeping up with this session, as well as the latest proposals for improving host networking performance, you probably notice two main trends. On the NIC side, I have a simple relation of this increasingly more complex offloads that increasingly operate at higher network layers. On the CPU side, I have seen the rise of these efficient network stacks that often use techniques such as kernel bypass and rely on batching to reduce per packet overheads. But while there's been tremendous improvement in these both fronts, one piece of this figure has been really similar over the past 30 years which is the way the NIC and the CPU communicate. So in this talk, I'm going to argue that there is a mismatch between how NICs are used and the interface that they provide, and that by fixing this mismatch, we can significantly improve performance while also paving the way for higher-level offloads. OK, so let's start by looking at how the existing NIC interface works. At a high level, the existing NIC interface uh, is a packetized interface. And what I mean by this is that for every packet that we receive, we're going to dedicate an individual packet buffer with a fixed size. So for every packet that comes, the NIC will send each one to their own dedicated buffer. And the first problem with this interface is the packetizer abstraction itself. And that's because that's unsuitable for higher level offloads. So suppose, for example, that I have a NIC that is aware of RPCs or application level messages. Even though the message can spend multiple packets, the NIC here is aware of the message boundary. But even though the NIC is aware of the message boundary, the packetizing interface forces the message to be split among these different packet buffers. And also often needs to recombine these pieces before delivering the message to the application. And if your NIC is aware of, uh, of a transfer protocol such as TCP that delivers a continuous byte string abstraction, there's not even a concept of boundary, and you can have more data coming at any given point. And again, software needs to recombine these pieces before delivering to the application. The second problem with the packetizing interface is that it, it has poor cache interaction due to, due to this phenomenon that we call chaotic memory access. So even if you're using this interface with packets, all software access the packets. Because these buffers can be in arbitrary memory locations, it's really hard for the CPU to predict what the next access will be. So as a result, even when you use like a simple echo server with the 3 k it's as much as 55% miss ratio in the L2 cache. And the last problem that I'm talking about is the metadata overhead. And that is because the packetized interface uses not only these packet buffers, but it also uses a descriptoring buffer to synchronize buffers with the NIC. So even before software receives any packet, it needs to post these buffers to the NIC. The NIC then needs to read these descriptors. And for every packet, the NIC first needs to write a packet, but also needs to write a descriptor to tell software that a packet arrived. So as a result, we see like a, uh, a lot of bandwidth being used with metadata over uh, PCA. And not only this, we have a lot of CPU cycles that are being spent processing this metadata. And I have a similar process for transmission with similar problems. OK. So I show these three problems, and I argue that these are due to a mismatch between the needs are used, between how the needs are used, and the interface that they provide. So the natural question now is, can we do better? Can a different NIC interface avoid all these problems? And the answer, of course, is yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be giving this talk. And our proposal for such a new interface is ENSO. And the key idea for ENSO is that we're going to replace the packetized abstraction by streaming abstraction. So ENSO provides this primitive that we call an ENSO pipe. And NICs an application can communicate using the ENSO pipe by using arbitrary byte strings. 
So what exactly do we mean by a stream abstraction? What I mean is that we're going to provide an illusion of an unbounded buffer. So instead of having these packet buffers per packet, as you have in the packetized abstraction, a stream abstraction gives you the illusion of an unbounded buffer. And now the link in the CPU can transmit data among themselves by appending data to this unbounded buffer. So these effectively, effectively like the Nikon application, communicate using byte chains. And this is extremely flexible. Even if your NIC has no offloads, you can still use the Anzo pipe to enqueue raw packets to the application. But if your NIC happens to be aware of application level messages, you can enqueue these large messages continuously in this Anzo pipe. And of course, if your NIC trans implements a transfer protocol, such as TCP, we can communicate a byte stream using the Anzo pipe. Okay, so hopefully I convinced you that this is extremely flexible, but there are two main questions that I still need to answer. The first is how we actually implement this. And the second is how, is, how can a stream abstraction also improve performance? So let me start with the first one. So recall that we want to provide the illusion of an unbounded buffer. And the way we do this is by having each of these ENSO pipes consisting of a, a single contiguous buffer. And now we can treat each buffer uh, as a ring buffer for data. So both the NIC and the CPU have their own pointers, and we can use these pointers to synchronize access to the ENSO pipe. So for instance, if the NIC pushes two packets uh, to the CPU, it can now advance the pointer pointing to the very last packet. Okay, so how does that help us with performance? Well, it turns out that by more closely matching the application access patterns, and so also solves the two performance issues that I talk about for the packetizing interface. So in Enso, because you're always appending data after the previous one, memory access are naturally sequential. So as a result, you can reduce cache misses by orders of magnitude. And also because we are always uh, appending data after the previous one, we no longer need to have per packet metadata. We're able to notify batches of packets at the same time. And this lets us reduce the same metadata traffic considerably and also cycles processing this metadata. Okay, but in order to deliver on these performance promises, there are a bunch of challenges that are hard to address in Ansys design. And the first challenge is actually how often should the NIC notify each batch? Because naively, you may have the NIC send a new update for every packet that it will enqueue in the ANSO pipe by advanced its pointer. But the problem is that this reintroduces the per packet overheads you're trying to avoid in the first place. And that is because every one of these updates are gonna be metadata sent over the PCIe and also in core CPU cycles processing these updates. So ideally you wanna balance these updates so that they're not too fast, that would cause a lot of overhead, but also that they're not too slow to the point that like the, the application will be waiting for packets that are already there. And, and the way the answer services problems is by combining two different techniques, a reactive notifications and notification prefetching. And you may think that you need some complex mechanism on the NIC to try to predict uh, when to send these next updates. But instead what we're doing in so is that we leverage the fact that the NIC already knows how fast software is consuming data based on the pointer updates from the CPU. So what we're doing in so is that we send updates reactively to CPU pointer updates. I'm gonna show how that, how that works. So when the first pack arrives, the NIC will send an update. But if more packets come, the NIC will suppress the update until after the CPU consumes the first one. And now we can set a reactive notification pointing to the very last packet. And while this is sufficient to ensure that every packet is notified, it has a problem because of PCA latency. And that is because whenever the NIC pointer and the CPU pointer, they meet, 
we're going to need to wait for up to one PCI RTT before we get a reactor notification. And only then we can process the next batch. So ENSO also has a, a second mechanism that we call notification perfection that can be used in conjunction with reactive notifications. And the way this works is that even before the software starts processing a batch, you will issue an explicit request for a pointer update from the NIC. And that way, while it's processing the batch, you can receive the next update from the NIC, and you can, mo can move on to the next batch right away. And there are many other designing challenges that unfortunately I won't have time to talk about here. So I encourage you to refer to the paper for more details. Okay, so let's see how we actually implement this in practice. And because ENSO is an interface between the NIC and application, its design encompasses both hardware and software. And in the hardware side, we implemented a full NIC uh, that exposes a, an ENSO interface. And in the software, we have a kernel module used for setup and an ENSO library that exposes a streaming abstraction to the application. Okay, and because we have this end-to-end -end implementation, we can actually evaluate ENSO by running in a real system. But the very first challenge that we encounter is that all the existing package generators that are based on the packetized interface, and as such, they suffer from the performance issues that I was talking before. So none of them is actually fast enough to stress test ENSO. So the very first application that we implemented was ENSOGEN, which is a software package generator based on the ENSO NIC interface. And because it's based on ENSO, ENSOGEN can actually deliver full packet rate, even with mean size packets and a single CPU core. And in fact, ENSO, if you, if you evaluate in a macro server, that is like modifying every packet and sending them back, ENSO becomes bottlenecked by 100 gigabit Ethernet, even with a single core and mean size packets. But I think ReviewerD said it best. According to ReviewerD, ENSO soundly destroys the PDK for many types of microbenchmark applications. And indeed, we, we, we ported four different applications to ENSO, and we saw throughput improvements of as much as six times compared to the PDK. And when we look, when we look at the two different mechanisms that I talk about for pacing notifications, we, we can see here the effects of ENSO sending a notification for every packet, which is the blue line, as well as ENSO with both mechanisms. So we can see here, as we increase the load, ENSO with reactive notifications and notification perfection can achieve way higher loads without compromising latency. And if you compare that to the A10 NIC, which is the state-of-the-art Intel NIC, we can see that we achieve comparable latency with a much greater load. But what is, I think is perhaps most surprisingly, is that even though ENSO is optimized for applications that consume data in order, since it's placing data sequentially in the same buffer, we, ENSO still outperforms the packetized interface, even for applications such as virtual switches that need to reorder packets. And that is despite the fact that ENSO needs to an additional copy compared to the PDK. So here we show ENSO with an extra copy and compare that with the DPDK and no copy. And we see that the benefits of ENSO are so large that they actually can like, are even better than the cost of copy. So to conclude, I introduced ENSO, which is a streaming interface for NIC application communication. And I show that ENSO can improve application throughput by up to six times, even with no offloads on the NIC. So these are only by changing the interface. But because ENSO allows easier and more efficient high-level offloads, we're really excited to see how people are gonna use ENSO for different kinds of offloads and applications. So we made ENSO open source, and it can access both the source code as well as comprehensive documentation on this link. Thank you. <laughs>